Hey, thanks so much for watching this morning. My name is Ryan Stanley and I work here for Campus Ministries. I just want to go ahead and tell you we're going to have a great word today from Dr. James Noble. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, go back and look at last week's message. It's a panel discussion that Dr. Noble also moderated. It's incredible. It's still up everywhere. It's on our YouTube channel. It's in the app. So go give that a watch. And I hope you enjoy the service. Hey, Anderson University. We are so excited that you are here. Welcome to Campus Worship. Let's get started.
So this next song has really made me take a step back and look at my expectations for God. And last year during a really uncertain season of my life, I found myself praying every night, but my prayers were full of my own requests and things that I wanted God to do. But the thing is, if we focus just on what we want from God, then we're missing out on so much more. Just the presence of God and just the just God himself can give us so much more peace than the changing of any of our circumstances. So as we sing this next song, I encourage you to just focus on God's presence and rather than focusing on what it is you want from him, just focus on him. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you Just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. Not just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your breath. Nothing else, Jesus. nothing else will 
Thank you for this opportunity to worship you. And whether that be remotely or together. And God, I pray that as the semester picks up the pace and our stress may increase and our responsibilities increase, that we would just know that you are with us and find peace in your presence. In Jesus' name. Dr. James Noble, Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion right here at Anderson University. And I don't know about you, but I am excited that we are back on campus. We are back on campus. Can I say it one more time? We are back on campus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, welcome to the very first chapel service of 2020. We are excited and delighted to be able to have this opportunity uh, to hear from God's words, God's word. But let me first uh, just give a shout out to uh, Dr. Didway. I want to thank him for giving me this opportunity uh, to preach God's word on this first chapel service. And uh, also just want to uh, thank God for our president, President Whitaker, and uh, for his leadership and his wisdom in leading um, such a great institution. And then uh, to all of the students here at Anderson University, what about the class of 2020? Is the class of 2020 excited? Yes, I hope so. What about the class of 2024? This is your first time here at Anderson University. We are excited that all of our freshmen are here, and we are looking forward to having a wonderful, wonderful semester. I'm super excited to be able to share uh, from God's Word. And so, without further ado, let me just go ahead and pray, and then we'll get into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for uh, this time. Thank you for this moment that we have, Father, to look into your Word. What a joy and what a delight it is, Father, to hear from you. We thank you for your Word that has been preserved for us throughout thousands and thousands of years, and we know that it is timely and it is timeless. And so, Father, speak to us today as we hear from you. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Well, I'm thankful to have this opportunity again to be preaching God's word. Uh, our campus theme, campus worship theme this year is triumphing over life's trials triumphant over life's trials. And you know uh, that we have been in such um, trials and tribulations here just this year, starting in the month of March. And I think this is a very appropriate theme to help us. How can we triumph over life's trials? Well, I think there's a passage of scripture that will speak um, to this theme. And I pray that you will be encouraged by God's word. So from Psalm 23, Psalm 23, a very familiar passage, Psalm 23, uh, verses 1 through 
6. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to be reading from uh, the New King James Version of the Bible. And the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My friends, I just want to try to preach on this thought um, today, and that is do not fear the valley. Do not fear the valley. We see this verse here, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Do not fear the valley. Psalm 23 is one of the most beloved psalms in all of the Bible. I mean, it is a psalm that really conveys comfort and calm. But in the midst of Psalm 23 is one of the most darkest verses. And it is verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley. My friends, I think that we are in valley-like situations today. I think all over our continent, all over the continent in the world, we're in a valley. We're in a valley-like situation because of this virus that is sweeping the globe. We're in a valley-like situation. I believe these United States is in a valley-like situation. Think about what's going on in our land. Trouble in the White House, trouble in the streets with rioting and, and protest and looting. We're in a valley-like situation. This valley, can, can I talk more about this valley? I believe that even our homes, when we think about um, um, people losing their jobs because of this virus, economic recession, depression, we're in a valley-like situation. Many people have lost their jobs, been laid off. They are in valley-like situations. Some are waiting on that next unemployment check, a valley-like situation. Just think many of us, we were in school, but then we had to leave school because of the virus. We had to go to remote learning and remote jobs, working um, from home in a valley-like situation. And I think even in our churches, think about our churches, we're in valley-like situations. Valley-like situations become some states have banned worship. Some states say that, that we, it is illegal to sing in our churches. Many churches are worshiping outside. Many churches are worshiping online. Many are concerned about coming up into the church because of the coronavirus. In our churches, we're in a valley-like situation. But can I speak to you personally? I think many of us are in valley-like situations. When we think about our own personal lives, we're thinking, God, how long must this happen? How long must we have to wear masks? How long must we have to physically distance ourselves? How long, God, must I be in this valley-like situation? The valley, my friends. It's a deep, dark place. It is a valley to where we cannot see our way clear. The valley. But I have good news for you. There's a shepherd who's in the valley. There's a shepherd, my friends, that we can keep our eyes on. This shepherd is in the valley with us. That's why David said the Lord is is my shepherd. Aren't you thankful for the shepherd? 
aren't you thankful for the shepherd? Just in case you don't know who the shepherd is, his name is Jesus. That's right, Mary's baby. Jesus, the great I am, that's who the shepherd is. He's El Shaddai, the shepherd. He is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the shepherd. He's the bright and morning star, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Do you know him? That's who the shepherd is. And when you are in your valley, you don't have to fear because the shepherd is near. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad that we have a shepherd? And so listen, my friends, we don't have to fear our valley light situations when we keep our eyes on the shepherd. That's what I want to tell you today is to keep your eyes on the shepherd when you're in your valley. And that's what David did. David kept his eyes on the Lord. And David realized something very significant about the shepherd. And I just want to encourage you today while you're going through so that you can triumph over life's trials and tribulations. Can I just share a few things with you? How can we, why should we keep our eyes on the shepherd when we're in the valley? Well, I think the first thing is this, is because the shepherd meets spiritual needs. The shepherd meets spiritual needs. Look at it right there in verse number one. David said here, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not won't. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. There it is. There it is. See, the shepherd will meet our spiritual needs. When, when David says, I shall not want, what he's really saying is, is that I will not be in lack. I will not be in need. So even in the midst of our trials, my friends, the shepherd will meet our spiritual needs. The Bible says that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Aren't you glad about that? He will meet our needs. He says that he will supply all of our need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad that we serve a shepherd? We have a shepherd that we can keep our eyes on because he meets our spiritual needs. Not only David says, I, I shall not want, but he says, that he, he restores my soul. Look at verse number three there. He restores my soul. Many of us are going through some situations right now. We, we've come on campus. We've left our home for the very first time. We left our parents behind and we're trying to find ourselves here in college. We're trying to find our way. Listen, my friends, and there are some times when you will feel all alone. But listen, if you'll keep your eyes on the shepherd when you're all alone, he'll restore your soul. If you keep your eyes on the shepherd, he will straighten you up right. When you keep your eyes on the shepherd, he will pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. And so keep your eyes on the shepherd when you're in your valley. That's right. He will meet every spiritual need. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, our Lord, with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. That's the shepherd, y'all. That's why we can keep our eyes on him, because he meets every spiritual need. Well, not only that, my friends, not only will he meet every spiritual needs, but I think we can also discover in this text that the shepherd meets directional needs. He meets directional needs. Notice what the psalmist wrote in verse number two. He says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Well, in verse, and at the end of that, he says, he leads me. There it is. There it is. He leads me. Notice in verse number three. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 2 says, he leads me beside the still waters. Yeah, that's right. You see, God has a GPS system. It's God's protection through his spirit. That's it. God's protection through his spirit. That's his GPS, my friends. And he will lead you in the path of righteousness. He will lead you beside the still waters. See, understand something about sheep. 
Sheep will not lie down in any kind of situations. Sheep will not lie down in rugged and rough terrain. Sheep, they have to be fed, and when they're fed, they have to find those green pastures where they can lie, lie down. And that's why David was saying here that the Lord will lead us beside still waters. He will lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I'm so thankful and so glad about it. And so my friends, when we are in our valley-like situations and we don't know which way to turn, if we would just keep our eyes on the shepherd, he will lead us in the way that we should go. He will direct us into those green pastures. He will lead us into righteousness because he is the righteous one. So aren't you glad that we have a shepherd who will meet our directional needs? Listen, God will gently guide you into all goodness. He will gently guide you into all goodness if you keep your eyes on him while you're in your valley-like situations. Well, my friends, there's something else I think that David points out in this text is that the shepherd will also meet your emotional needs. He'll meet your emotional needs. Notice here in verse number four, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I like that, y'all. I like that. He says here, yea, though I walk through the valley. See, that's the good news there. You can't miss that word through because, see, when you keep your eyes on the shepherd, he's not going to stop in the valley. He's going through the valley. And David said that I won't have to even run when darkness is all over me. I won't have to run when I'm fearful. I won't have to run when gloom and sadness is all over my life because if I just keep my eyes on the Lord, we are going to walk through the valley. That's right. When you're with the Lord, you can walk in the midst of trouble. You can walk in the midst of danger. When the Lord is on your side, it doesn't matter who's not on your side. If God be for us, he's more than the whole world against us. Aren't you glad and excited about that? The shepherd meets our emotional needs. Why do I say emotional needs? Because, my friends, when you're in the valley, the valley symbolizes gloom. It symbolizes darkness. It symbolizes a deep darkness that you can't even see your way clear because it's so dark. And sometimes our lives, and we think about um, what's going on presently in our lives. When we think about it, my friends, we, we are in a valley-like situation. But God, he's there. He's with us. And so we, we sometimes we, we don't know how to pray when, when things are so dark and heavy on our lives. We, we, we are in so much pain that, that, that it seems like nobody can come along and help us through and, and get out of this situation. We, we, we're all alone. Friends walk away from us. We can't fall Call, call family. Family is, is away from us. And we're trying to figure this thing out. And, and we're in this valley-like situation. But aren't you glad you don't have to fear? Praise God. He says you don't have to fear because he says, I am with you. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, there it is right there. See, when we're in the valley, listen, the Lord is with us. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And to think about, I, I like how David begins to talk about a shepherd's staff and, and a shepherd's rod. You see, the rod, my friends, was, was made to uh, protect the sheep from wild animals. The, the rod was there to protect the sheep. And then the staff was there to help the sheep. Like when the, when the sheep um, fell off into rugged terrain or, or got stuck in the mud, and the staff was the, the crooked portion uh, uh, of, the, of the staff and so he, uh, uh, of the rod. And so he would grab the rod and the staff, grab the sheep by the leg and pull the sheep 
out of the mud. Use the rod to protect them from wild animals. Aren't you glad the Lord has a staff? Aren't you glad the Lord has a rod? Because he says here, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, when the devil is on your tracks, God has a rod. Uh, when, the, when you're stuck and you've gone your own way, you see, sheep are prone just to wander. They, they're prone to just wandering. But aren't you glad that the Lord has a staff and a rod to protect us from the enemy, but also to bring us back into the fold? Praise God and hallelujah. It's his rod and his staff. They will comfort us. When we're in the valley-like situations, my friends, listen, the Lord, the shepherd meets every emotional need, but not only emotional needs, my friends, but the shepherd meets all physical needs. Notice what he says here in verse number five. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. You anoint my head with oil. Praise God. My cup runs over, the psalmist says. I'm so glad that the Lord can meet all of our physical needs. Listen, he'll feed us, but he will heal us as well, my friends. See, he says here that, that I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What he's saying there is that your enemies, what God does for you, your enemies cannot stop. Your enemies cannot block because God is preparing it right in the midst of your enemies. And so they'll scratch their head and say, how is it that you can still wear a smile? under that mask, praise God, when coronavirus is all around us? How is it that you can get up and still go to class when the coronavirus is still around? How is it that you can leave your home and still come to school when the coronavirus is all around us? Listen, God, people will begin to ask questions and you can let them know that it is the Lord, praise God, my eye is on the shepherd while I'm in the midst of all of this valley-like turmoil. It is the Lord, my friends, who will meet every physical need. And so those of you who've left your home coming to college, listen, when it's God's will, it is God's bill. He will provide for you. He will protect you. He will give you the things that you need while you're away from home. He'll give you the things that you need because the Bible says, and I like where David said it, he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That means we won't be in lack. The Lord will provide everything that we need. Not only that, my friends, but also notice the fact he says here that uh, you will anoint my head with oil. I like that word anoint. I like that word anoint, praise God. That word anoint there, it really means fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it means fat. And, and, and what he's saying here is that it is the Lord who will make us prosperous. He will make us prosperous. I remember uh, having um, a mission trip to Africa and went to Africa and got to talking to one of our tour guides and we got to talking about the poverty in the land and talking about how uh, uh, things were scarce, food was scarce for, for a certain part of the country and, and then and they began to tell us, this, now listen, so if you see a skinny person then we looked at that person and said well that person may be in poverty because they don't have food to eat but if you see a fat African, then that person is well fed. Oh, my friends, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm just trying to teach God's word. This word anoint means fat. In other words, God, uh, God says that I like fat Christians. <laughs> Praise God. That's what it is. I like fat Christians because he will anoint you. He will prosper you. He, he will make your pocket fat. He will make your mind fat. He will make your refrigerator fat. He will make everything around you to where you will have what you need to be prosperous in his name. But also I like the fact that he says, I'm not just going to feed you. I'm not just going to give you enough. He says, but I'm going to give you so much that your cup will run over. <laughs> That's the God we serve. He is a super exceedingly abundantly God. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And when he wants to feed us, my friends, he can just slay a cow. Praise God. And take care of all of our needs. He says, your cup will run over. 
That's more than enough. In other words, you'll have enough for, for your family. You'll have enough uh, for your dorm room. You'll have enough uh, for yourself. But then God says your cup is going to run over. You're going to have enough for your sweet mates. You're going to have enough for your neighbor. You're going to have enough for those that's uh, working on the other side of you. God says you'll have enough to feed the poor. You'll have enough because your cup is going to run over. Praise God and hallelujah. Listen, the shepherd meets all of our physical needs, my friends, and I like the fact, now let's think about this just for a moment. Think about this and how God will provide for us. You remember Elijah? Elijah was running from the king and the king was out to kill him. And so Elijah went off into the wilderness. And the Bible says that a raven came to feed Elijah bread and meat. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. Wait, 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 wait. You, 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 mean, you mean God used a raven to bring bread and meat to Elijah? How can a raven do that? Where, where did this food come from? Well, there's a speculation. There's a speculation. And the speculation is this, is that the very king that Elijah was running from, uh, one preacher said that it was the ravens that went to the king's court, got food from the king's court, and brought it to Elijah. Now, I don't know how true that is, but I do know what is true, and that is the fact that God will meet all of our physical needs when we are going through our valley lack situations. Keep our eyes on the Lord, my friends. Oh, but there's something else, and then I got to leave you alone. But the shepherd will also meet every eternal need. He'll meet e every eternal need. Notice what he says here. Surely, somebody say surely. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Listen, surely goodness and mercy. Listen, God will meet every eternal need. Praise God. Surely goodness and mercy. You see, the sheep, uh, the shepherd had sheepdogs. And when the shepherd decided they want to go astray, then the shepherd would take the sheep dogs and to go to corral the sheep and to bring them back into the fold. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and when the enemies would come, then the, he would have another sheep dog to go and, and to, to run the enemies, the wild animals away from the sheep. So, so the shepherd had sheep dogs. Well, God has some sheep dogs. One of them is named Goodness. Aren't you glad that God has some goodness uh, for you? Aren't you glad that God can bring goodness in your life? Listen, when you are running astray, when you don't know which way to turn, when you've gone your own way, God will send goodness, praise God, to bring you back in the sheepfold. When mercy comes along, yeah, the enemy tries to come along, make you downcast in your mind, make you think that God is not with you. Well, then God will send a sheep dog called mercy. Mercy will come along. And I like what David says here, that God will just not send goodness and mercy one day. Oh, no, no. He says here that goodness and mercy shall follow you, praise God. Goodness and mercy shall follow you, praise the Lord. And so when you come into a, a Henderson for chapel, when you come into your classroom, guess what's going to follow you? Goodness and mercy will follow you, praise God. Just when you go to work, you leave your house and, and you come to work praise God come to work we know that coronavirus is out here but guess what goodness and mercy will follow you and I like the fact that this my friend he didn't say goodness and mercy will just follow you today he didn't say goodness and mercy will just follow you this week. Oh, no, but he said he didn't say goodness and mercy will just follow you through 2020. No, God says that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Praise God. He says he'll meet every eternal need. And I like the fact of how he closed. He says here that and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, that's God meeting every eternal need. Aren't you glad that God says that you can dwell in the house of the Lord? He's making sure to let you know, listen, you belong to me and I belong to you. I am the good shepherd, praise God, who laid down my life for the sheep. Aren't you glad that the good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep? That's right, my friends. He went to the cross. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. I'm about to get real happy, y'all. And he died 
on that cross. They nailed him in the side. They put a crown of thorns on his head and blood came streaming down. It was the good shepherd, y'all, that died on that cross. And when they took him down off of that cross, I know this is chapel time, but I'm real happy because when I realized the fact that the good shepherd went down off the cross, placed in Joseph's new tomb, and he was there all night Friday night, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early Sunday morning. I'm excited, y'all. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And so, my friends, you don't have to fear your valley-like situations if you just keep your eye on the shepherd when you're in your valley. You can conquer life's trials. You can triumph over life's trials. Even right here in Anderson, South Carolina, you can conquer life's trials. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're in America or in Antarctica, if you're in Belgium or if you're in Boston, you can conquer life's trials because you have the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And he came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Praise God and hallelujah. Give him glory. He's worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. And so, my friends, when you're in your valley-like situation, keep your eye on the shepherd. And it may get very dark. You may be in a very dark place right now. Put your hands over your eyes and look hard. And I guarantee you that you will find a lily in the valley. You will find a light in darkness. And his name is Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for being the good shepherd. Thank you for being our shepherd. And you know the times in which we live. And it's hard. But we know that if we keep our eyes on you, you'll lead us through this valley of the shadow of death. Father, I thank you for every person that's listening right now. And if they do not know you, God, I pray that they will call on your name right now because your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Some are hurting right now, God. Many are hurting right now. And they need your presence They need for you, God, to come into their midst and help them not to fear, but to trust you. Because you said in your word that if we put our trust in you, we will never be ashamed. Father, bless our semester. Bless our semester. Bless every faculty, staff, administrator student, contractor, bless us all. God, this school belongs to you. And so we pray that your perfect divine will be done in this semester for us. Protect us all, God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hey, thanks so much for that word, Dr. Noble. It's another great look at Psalm 23 for this semester. Hey, I want to go ahead and encourage you guys, uh, take care of each other this week. Be safe out there, and we hope to see you again next week. Thanks.